Hello, welcome to lesson seven of the Firebase tutorial video series. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at retrieving the data that we've set uh, right here in our Firebase real-time database. Uh, we've just got three messages right now, but we're going to retrieve those and display them in our table view. So one thing I should mention that's really cool about this real-time database is that rather than just querying the data and grabbing all three of these posts, what you can do is also listen for updates to a particular node. So for example, if we attach uh, a listener, let's say to this node here, posts, then every time there's activity in this node, let's say a new message gets added, our app will get notified and then we can grab that new data and display that in the table view. So that's why it's called a real-time database. So in this lesson, you're going to see how that works as well. Okay, so let's start by going into the documentation for uh, the database portion. And just to remind you, up here you can click Go to Docs. And then on the left-hand side, well, actually click on Guides up here. And then on the left-hand side, go down to Real-Time Database. And then under iOS, Read and Write Data. So where are we here? Okay, let's scroll down. This is listen for value events. And here is a code sample of that. It's probably easier if I just show you in Xcode, but notice that the function we use on the reference is observe. So let's go back to our Xcode project and use that function. Let me show you how to do that. In our Xcode project in viewcontroller.swift, we have this post data. This is just hard coded dummy data here. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm just going to make it an empty string array like that. And then we are going to have to do the same thing that we did in the compose view controller. We're going to have to create a reference to that database. So var reference uh, fire database or fire. Oh, that's right. I forgot to import um, Firebase database. So fir database dot, um, sorry, database reference. That's what that is. Just lost my train of thought. This property is going to hold a fire database reference and we're going to set it right here. Set the Firebase reference. So ref equals, uh, here we go, like that. So now we have a reference to our uh, Firebase real-time database. Uh, retrieve the posts and listen for changes. So now that we have the reference to the database, we can retrieve our posts. So we go ref dot child and we have to specify the path to the data we want to retrieve and that is posts because that is this node right here and I'm just saying that I want to retrieve all of this data and I want to use that function that I mentioned observe there is a couple of different ones you'll notice that some say observe only and some say observe single event so I'm going to explain to you what single event is in a short while after we implement this. But for now, let's use observe event type and with a block of code that we can put in uh, to handle when that event happens. So I'm going to double click that. And oh, one thing I wanted to uh, make sure you notice, let's press observe again. This function here returns this uint. Okay, that's going to be important in a second. Okay, so event type, let's specify that. Let's see what sort of event types that we can specify. Press dot, autocomplete should pop up. Okay, and the one we want to use is child added because I'm interested in um, all of the new posts that get added. Uh, when a new post gets added, I want the code to execute. So I'm going to pick child added. If you pick something like, you know, these are pretty self-explanatory value is kind of the general one. If anything changes with any of the data below this node, then um, if you're interested in that, that's the one you want to handle. But I only care if new posts get added. So I'm going to choose that. 
And for the block of code for this closure, you can just double click it to expand it. In here, we're going to put the code to execute when a child is added under posts. And it has a single parameter which contains that data. It's a fire data snapshot. So I'm going to call this parameter snapshot. So we're going to refer to it by that name. Okay, so I've told it to observe this node posts and for the event child added. How this works is it's going to initially go through all of the children of posts and it's going to fire that code once for each child. So in my code, in this closure here, uh, I basically want to take that data that it passes me back and add that to my messages data array that I have up here, which I called post data. Let's write a comment so we know what we're doing. Take the value from the snapshot and add it to the post data array. And after it goes through each of these pieces of data under post, it's only going to fire again when a new post gets added. So that connection is open to the database and it's going to keep listening for that data. Um, we are responsible for stopping that. In other words, detaching that listener. And the way we do that is remember how I said this function observe returns a uint? Well, that uint is the reference to that specific listener or this connection that we have open here that's feeding us all of these updates under posts. So we want to keep a reference to that because later on um, we can use that reference to close or detach that listener. So I know that from reading the documentation that what it is is a database handle and the class is an FIR database handle. So I'm going to create a property for it up here and I'm going to set database handle uh, equal to that call to the observe function because that is going to return um, that uint and I'm going to keep track of it using this property here. So now that we have this set up, uh, we are going to right now post data is an empty string array, right? This code is going to fire for each piece of data under posts and for each piece of new data. So whenever I get a piece of new data, I basically want to take post data and I probably have to refer to it using self because we're doing this inside a closure, uh, self.post.append and I have to append a new element which is going to be um, a string because post data is a string array. So before we do that, um, I want to see how snapshot this fire data snapshot class is structured and how the data is returned. So I'm going to set a breakpoint right here um, just so we can take a look inside snapshot and run the app. So hopefully if it connects to the Firebase database, it's going to hit this breakpoint. All right, uh, looks like it has. And under here in the console, there's all of these warnings and things like that that's happening behind the scenes. I wouldn't worry too much about that until we're actually running it on a device and not a simulator because things can be different. So I'm going to use PO for print object. I'm going to print snapshot and just to see what is returned. So that looks to be the key. Right. That's this guy right here, right? Yes. And the value is that hello Firebase. So what I'm going to do is we can't just append snapshot as is dot. So there's a property for the key, which is string. And for the value, it's any because, and it could be nil as well. So take note of that. It's an optional any. So we need to uh, take this value and we need to change it into a string first before we actually append it. So let's say let, uh, let's say, let's say the post equals uh, snapshot dot value as string and if let actual post equals post so we're using conditional binding here so if there actually is data in there because we're trying to turn it into a string if for some reason it's nil or it fails 
then it's not going to execute. Like it's going to fail this condition. So this the if statement here, this conditional uh, binding here is testing if there's data inside here. And if there is, it's going to assign it to actual post as a string. So we're just going to append actual post into post data like that into our array. And we're going to call reload on uh, the table view to refresh the data. So let's say table view dot reload data. So let's write some comments so we know uh, so it's clear what we're doing here. So append the data to our post data array. Reload the table view. Try to convert the value of the data to a string. Okay, so I'm going to remove the breakpoint. Uh, let's use self here. And okay, let's run it again. So now you see our data from the Firebase database. And what's happening is basically um, when we use this observe function right here, it's looking for this event child added on this posts node. And every time this event happens, it's going to run this code down here. And when it runs this code, it passes us uh, the data that's associated with this event. So we can actually try this out here, right here in our simulator right now, in our database, we have three items. So if I had another device and I was running it and I added a message, it should instantly show up here, but I'm going to do it through here and it should happen as well. So I'm just going to add a post in this database. And because we have um, this observe function, listening to this node posts, it's going to pick up that a new child was added and then it's going to run this code and append that new data to our post data array and then reload the table view. So let's see if that happens. Let's put that right there. I'll shrink this a little bit. So, uh, so auto ID, I, I wonder if I can actually do that from here. I'm not sure about that. So I'm just going to put in some ID like that and this should show up so you see how fast that happened that is really cool now what if you didn't want to uh, listen for any sort of event you just wanted to retrieve the data and not have an open connection you can do that using if we scroll back up here instead of using the observe function we use the observe single event of and using this one we can read the data once and then it won't keep an open connection and be listening for any sort of events on that node so that pretty much sums it up for our messaging app so now you know how to create your firebase app how to add the sdk into your xco project how data is stored in your Firebase real-time database, and furthermore, how to read and write data to it and from it. Oh yeah, not to mention how data is stored in that Firebase database. In the future, we'll work more with the Firebase real-time database, as well as potentially other features of Firebase. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.